guys, and welcome back to Full Coverage, your favorite podcast. I'm Manny Mue, and, and we have Miss Laura Lee. Hey, hey, lean hey, with it, hey, hey, rock hey. with it. Lean welcome with to it. your favorite podcast. Well, that's just what it is, and that's just what it is, and that's just what it is. There's and nothing honestly, we can do about it. I will say, like. I see comments that are like, you guys are actually my favorite podcast. Well, that's where this whole thing started. And that makes my, that's how, that's how, how your started. favorite podcast started. started. And now I feel like it's our literal slogan. You know what I like to see? <laughs> I like to see full fam everywhere. Oh, it's my favorite. TikTok, favorite, favorite, Twitter, favorite, favorite. Instagram, mm -hmm. IG story, Snapchat, the full fam's there. I love, like, that's like my favorite thing. I love to see you guys in random areas. I was like, hey, I watched the podcast. Or like, like, hey, I'm part of the full what fam. Are what are you doing here? here? I am obsessed with this. So thank you guys Me for making too. full coverage such a success because like we're in 2023 now. We've been had it for a year now. Oh my God. Which is so crazy to me. We were even thinking about changing the background. Okay, Lord guys. brought it up to me today. I know a few Bring it up, bring it up, bring it up. <laughs> I like to plant seeds. She does. She plants seeds in my head. <laughs> she plants, and then literally months later, they, it becomes a, a tree. I'm like, oh, yeah, I remember that now. But she's a she's a planter. I am. She will plant you gotta seeds be in my mind. I start with a little. A nugget. A nugget. Uh -huh. like, I walked in today. I was like, Manny. What if we change the wallpaper? Yeah, and I was like, okay, okay. I was like, yeah, you know, Next we've had it for a year in. and the whole thing. No, literally even like out here in the front, you're like, I think I want to like change it up a little bit. I'm like, okay, cool. Today I walk in, they're bringing up a table upstairs. Yep, he walked in right in time, honestly. Right in time, yeah, I see Because I was you. trying to get, there was like a TikTok that was like, when a gay best friend comes in handy, <laughs> like a gay male best friend comes in handy. <laughs> that was you, like that, that was, was literally me. today. That was me. Me lifting the shit for you. I was you. like, oh, thank, thank God. God. I was dying. I was trying to get a desk up the stairs. The best of both worlds what can the i say best you get it all it's an all-in-one with me you get it all you do a multi-talented strong queen mm, keep going mm, that's all you get <laughs> <laughs> okay guys so today we're having rapid fire that's what's going and on and i will say this has been a we're topic. talking about mascara gate we're talking about mascara gate <laughs> and this has been something that we have been getting inundated by i would say my dms my comments my YouTube videos, like I've gotten comments like when you guys talk about it in full coverage. To be transparent, like, and on the in in on mine and May's conversations, we didn't necessarily plan to talk about it. We didn't. We I'm really gonna be honest. Did it. We I'm really honest. did I'm it. Like, we Laura, like, I just don't know if I feel like I really want to talk about it. Yeah. I was like not feeling like we have our own thoughts, our own opinions about it, obviously. And I was like, I just don't know if I want to really get it up in there. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if I felt like getting into it. Because it's a doozy. Because it is a doozy. And I just didn't feel like, I don't know. Especially like sometimes, you know, with sometimes you're just like, I don't even need to get in that person's business. See, I, I feel, feel like, like, I'm like I don't, Sometimes I feel like because we've had our own drama, that's that's it's what it always is. a good time to mind your fucking business. I, that is what it. You know what is. I mean? Like whenever my track record isn't necessarily perfect and pristine, clean, perfect and pristine. Who am I that's to I feel say too. you're wrong? You should be doing. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? It comes across as like, well, girl, you are not perfect yourself. That's what. That's exactly where I'm at. I'm like, I have this like weird issue, and I know you do too. We both do of like dog piling on someone when we aren't having the most cleanest slates ever in the industry. Also, we in got world. dogpiled. We've been dogpiled on. For years, they're still dogpiling on us. We still get it, baby. We still get dogpiled. We still get it. And Literally. so we just have a different view and more of an empathetic uh, I when it comes to things like this. However, we're gonna obviously talk about it. We're gonna give us our, our real two we cents. We hear like, you, we, we see you. We hear you, we see you. And we're gonna like be very honest about what we think because it's not something that obviously we're like gonna let fly either. Exactly. Mm -hmm. what, um, what she said. 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 Um, but first, Peaks and Pits. Peaks and Pits. You already know we have to do Peaks and Pits first. Okay, I want to start with Peaks because me and you it's have a, a joint mutual. One. We have a it's joint, joint. peak. Vegas. Uh, let, me, let me get situated for Miss Vegas. <laughs> so I would feel like our, our peak is Vegas for sure. Laura actually vlogged it, by the way. So if you guys want to watch. Check out her vlog channel. If you guys want to see what happened in Vegas, the vlog is hilarious. It's so. Listen. I like me and Laura tell each other this. I was like, we don't really watch each other's videos because I'm like, bitch, I see you all the time. Mm -hmm. I don't need to watch your fucking videos. No. Like, I see you constantly, YouTube videos specifically. I'll watch your TikToks, reels, everything else. But YouTube videos, I'm like, girl, I fucking, hello. I was you, there. I lived you, it. You, I don't need to watch it again. Exactly. So I was like, I'm going to watch the, the vlog. Because <laughs> it was so fun. And it was just like nice to relive because that was such a fun time. Yeah. Because we went with Daniel. And then obviously we met up with Gabriel there too. So it was us four. Yeah. And it just felt like such an, it's always nice to have us four together. Yep. Because it's such a true, like, little, like, It's a like, good quad. group. It's, it's a, a good, good group. like, good quad. We also had one night, one night there. We had 
so it was like cool because we were like planning the trip mm -hmm. and then i was gonna go on the benefit trip because manny had gone there yes, on thursday yes, yes but i had some stuff i had to catch up with with aaron so mm -hmm. i couldn't make it to the benefit trip but um we were like wanting to go see drag race mm -hmm. and drag so race we texted the girlies me and mm -hmm. manny were mm -hmm. putting it together like, can we still make this happen because i was already going to be there so i'm going thursday uh, and, Gabriel Thursday, was already, and Gabriel was already going on Friday. Gabriel was going to see Adele, Adele with Jesus hair. Mm -hmm. um, and Jesus has also been one of our friends since Forever. he moved to LA. Like Forever. we were talking about that. I was like, dude, mm -hmm. I was like, how long have we known each other when we were out at the club? Like seven years. For like seven years. years, seven or eight. Yeah. 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 Because yeah. I met them whenever we first moved in LA. Yeah. Anyways, so we all had just like the best time. Like we had, ever. we had to make it happen. So then I was like, obviously, like, Laura, you can make it on Friday. Come Friday, Daniel, get your ass out here on Friday. So we we, we turned in a whole ass situation. We out turned it. it out. We turned we it out. We turned it out. Friday night, we ended up going and seeing Chris Angel. <laughs> <laughs> Daniel almost got arrested. First oh of my all. God, I forgot. <laughs> I don't even think I told Tyler. Oh my God, I forgot about that dude. Security escorted him out. They they literally secured Daniel out. So listen, okay. First of all, let's let's let's, let's, let's debrief. Why. Let's debrief Chris Angel. First of all, I want to take. The full responsibility for putting us in Chris Angel. Well, it was me. I would, you know, I'm, I'm going to take half of it Thank because you. it was either Chris Angel or it was Cirque one of the Cirque du Soleil shows. And I was those. like, I've already seen a lot of Cirque du Soleil shows. So I'm like, why don't we go see Chris Angel? Chris I've Angel never was seen. highly rated. Highly. Highly one rated. Of the, like actually one of the top shows in Vegas and mo like for longest running. Yep. So we're like, so like oh, it's, it's worth be it, right? Insane. Tickets weren't bad either mm. for like pretty decent seats. It was like 150 each. Not like the end for like, of the world. And we were literally in the front. So yeah, like we that were in the front. Decent for what it was. Now the show. <laughs> so there's great aspects to it. Yes. There is some tricks in there that I'm like, wow, yeah. you tricked me. You tricked you me. You tricked me. Like it really did get me together, some tricks, but. A lot of the show is just corny it's not vegas production it's a not, lot of the show is not vegas production so this is the thing when tricks are happening like those are fun like i love the tricks happening we that's went like there the cool for part the magic. The tricks. but the thing is the the transitions between the tricks is the difficult part most of the like most of the show is actually not actual magic tricks no. most of the show is like talking dancing like storytelling storytelling guitar guy playing and we were like what the hell like we just didn't i didn't i wasn't expecting that i thought it was gonna be like all magic so did i and it, it was almost like a play yeah in a way like, like, like a, a very play magic strange show. play 100 percent. and listen the thing that scares me about this is the amount of chris angel fans out there well, the people that were literally right next to us. We're going that crazy. That were literally barking. And so at one Oof. point, they literally asked you to pull out your phone and pull your flash up and wave mm -hmm. it through the air. They ask you to do oh, the that. The whole audience, whole audience. The whole audience. So mm -hmm. Daniel does it. And the woman looks at him and is like, he's recording. And Daniel's like, I'm not recording it. It's my flash. You asked us to have the flash yes. up. Yes. Straight up ignores him. Security pulled him out of the show along with like four like or five officer. other. A straight up police officer with like five other people. Mm -hmm. And then about two minutes later, he comes back to his seats and he was like, I showed them I wasn't recording I showed anything. them my fucking camera roll. Nothing there was, was recorded. nothing recorded. It, I was not recording the mm -hmm. show. So that was a little crazy. No, we literally like, why did you just take Daniel away? Yeah. Like we were all holding out yeah, for a flash. Like this. She was like, yeah. Well, actually said it to me too. She was like, you too. And I was like, <gasps> I didn't do nothing. I didn't do anything. Girl, we been trying to record Chris Angel. And then for some reason, they still grabbed Daniel. Even though oh, I was yeah. like, uh, uh, I didn't do anything. Oh, yeah. Even the woman behind us, they grabbed her and took her out too. Mm -hmm. I was like, Jesus Christ. Maybe we're not recording her something. Girl. What are we gonna record? <laughs> Girl, you tried it. What are we going to record? Um, but I will say after the show. Mm -hmm. when he said his age <gasps> okay so this was the thing together. our perception changed on the whole show so the whole show mm -hmm. it was a little bit mediocre i'm not gonna yes, lie yes. but then chris angel starts being like my mom's in the audience and she's 86 and me and manny looked at I'm each like, other 86. and we were like your mom's 86 how the fuck old are you mm -hmm. dude he's 55 that took me out of the game <gasps> i couldn't believe it i thought truly truly in my heart wild i was like he must be in his young 40s that was my immediate Mine first too. guess um so when he said that he was 55 and he was still doing all of that i I was like like the amount of stuff he does and running and jumping and all the crazy shit he does that at one last 55, trick when he's like <laughs> oh yeah at 55 i was shocked we were like actually wow this is like the coolest thing ever because i know a lot of people at 55 couldn't do half of what he's doing this guy is quarter, out here killing it literally right i was really really like blown away and like there was a part in the show that we talked about like his his kid who actually had 
child cancer. Yeah, and like they made like a portion of the show about donations to that, mm. bringing awareness to that. And it was kind of like, whoa, it's so cool that he does this. And then he explains his oldest child has battled with cancer. And like I was six like, years. okay, well now I'm crying no, at Chris Angel. No, literally, literally. Like, oh my God. So it was like, at the, by the end of the show, I was like, I'm so glad we went. Like I was very, yes. but it was like during the show, you're like, you're like, what What's is going, going on? on? Like, I was very confused. Where are we? It felt like a fever dream. No, where were, where were we? It was giving fever dream. But let's talk about the iconicness of Drag Race Life. So we go out that night. Me we and Mandy go home at like four in the morning. Another club. Like, went to sleep. Another club. Oh, Another club. That club was fun as well. It was so fun. And then we the didn't next. We until four in the morning. Yeah. I was a tired girl. Maybe we're in our 30s. Then uh, Daniel tried to poison us with vegan food. Oh, let's <laughs> talk about that. He takes us to his restaurant. Called that was so fucking funny. Crossroads. <laughs> You guys, Laura got got because she ate like she got chicken and waffles. Yep. And she ate some of the chicken and she was like, that's really good. It's like tofu. But the thing is, I was I'm not like he was though. recording me, so I was trying to be on my best behavior. But mm. whenever I cut it in half with a butter knife, I did get suspect because I've never cut a full piece of fried chicken in half with a butter knife. Like it like flipped oh, apart. Like it was too easy. It to was cut. too easy. So like, huh. I'm not gonna lie, I was a little like, damn, okay. That's some soft chicken. Like that's the most tender chicken I've, <laughs> I've ever, ever felt. felt in my whole life. They also didn't have Dr. Pepper red flag. <laughs> First of all, all of Vegas has like no Dr. <laughs> No, none of Vegas has Dr. Pepper, first of all. That was red flag number one. That was red flag number one. And then two, I take a bite and like you don't taste any chicken. You just taste flavor of seasoning. You taste chicken flavoring. I didn't taste no with, chicken. With like fry, with I fried. I didn't taste no chicken Laura, in there. yes, you fucking did. Because <laughs> you literally, after you're like, mm, that's good. Like you were like, I yeah. told you I was being on my best behavior. I didn't want to hurt Laura. Daniel's feelings. Listen, I did think it was good though. Yeah. Yes. Like, you know what? I was like, it's good. It's so seasoned. Yeah. <laughs> like, extreme flavor. Like, extreme season. Like, I'm getting a lot of seasoning. There's a lot of flavorings happening here. And then I understood why. And you're like, oh. It was like tofu. And they over seasoned to make it taste like chicken and meat. But is it, is it, was, was it even tofu? It was tofu. That's what tofu is, like, looks like. Also, and that's how tofu cuts. And mm, also, mm, his mm. piece of bacon tasted like a dog treat i will say the bacon was not good i wanted to throw up the bacon was horrible the it, was, it was it was fine be, it was begging it it was the, the bacon was begging they tried that for mercy for mercy dude. it was rough i feel like we should just not do the bacon <laughs> never like just don't make the bacon i might all the things i had eaten was great because i had like a you should have seen your face on camera when you found out it was vegan you said three times because he wouldn't answer you what the fuck is that no what the fuck i cut it because <laughs> you're I forgot. literally you have it you're like this. what the fuck is that what the fuck is that? no <laughs> i blacked so out i completely i don't even remember <laughs> it happening so i left one of them in <laughs> but he was like talking when answer you so He's you like, were like <laughs> what the fuck, what the fuck was is that? that what was that i was laughing so hard well, anyway, we, we show it in the, in the in the vlog. And then the next night, I mean the next, I mean that was that the night, next day. That night, Drag Race Live. Oh my god! You guys, you want to talk about a good fucking Ve Vegas show? I've seen Blue Man Group. I've seen magic Cirque shows, magic. Circus Love variety show. Mm, I've seen so many shows. I will tell you right now, Vegas Drag Race Live is Flamingo. number one at the Flamingo. It's number one for me as well. It's like because one. it's such a the thing is the queens that they have there are so amazing. Shout out to Derek Barry. Oh yes, fucking Slate is Britney number. Yes. George's Jay Denson Hall yep. Aquaria Coco. It mm -hmm. was. Asia as the a host oh, was like my god. Insane. Asia needs to be on TV immediately. Uh, I mean, she was on Drag Race. Thank God. She needs to be a host. More. She, she needs, needs to more. be a host. That's why I'm, I'm glad that she has this because she's so good at it that she's I'm like, able to, you're like, show incredible. Her talents. I want. I literally want to go to Vegas again just to see it. Me too. Because every perform like it's so imagine like a Vegas. So imagine a drag show of a really good drag queen on a Vegas scale where there's like more tricks Production. and like falling from the ceiling and just production value the dancers crazy thing everything. is like i've seen a lot of shows of like dancers and people dancing they don't move like this uh -uh. they pick the top moving queens they, they have top dancing top performing queens and they make it to vegas and like it's just it was wild. insane to watch them dance it was so fun and the show lasts so long but there's never even a second that you can take your eyes off the stage because mm -mm. so like much is happening so fast but it didn't even, it, to me it didn't even feel like it was no i was, I was like, sad it was over me too i was like i want to see more queens yeah it was 
incredible. So if you guys are ever in Vegas, go watch the Drag Race. Live. Even if you like, you don't watch Drag Race. Even if you don't know about drag queens. Even if like, you don't like, go watch it. It's because just I'm good. telling you, you're going to be laughing your ass off. Spooked. You're gonna be blown mm -hmm. away at the performances. Like if you want to have a jaw dropping moment in Vegas, that's it. Go do it. You guys, I almost slept with someone on, on, at the club. <gasps> he was so fine. Oh, oh wait, which God, night though? That was, one. That yeah, one. that one. Well, I mean, we technically didn't almost like sleep with each other. I'm being a little. I did walk with the man and I was like, you going to take this fine piece of ass home? Are you she coming with literally us? Literally, <laughs> ver fucking baby, take this fine ass home? Like, <laughs> verbatim, that's what you said. I was like, you taking this fine ass home? Or you said that fine piece of ass home? <laughs> I was like, Argh. he was so hot. He was so gorgeous, but we had been we hadn't been mutuals online for like forever, mm -hmm. and so we were just like chatting and chatting, and then it just ended up not happening. But I was close, Laura. I was it was close. you were close. I was close you to getting. Close. I was close to getting it in. You were, but, but did it happen? No, okay. it was we were, it was too jam packed. The Vegas. Next we were time. like, boom, boom, oh boom, yeah, boom, we were on, boom. we were girls on the go. We were girls on the go. We literally gambled too. Like it was a moment. I I can't. We were. I, I blacked out the whole time. I came home so tired. Oh, we, I needed a full day to rest. Oh, God. Two days, actually. As we should. Mm -hmm. Vegas is a two-day thing. Vegas was fabulous. It was great. All right, what's your pit? My pit... Oh, my God, this just happened to me like literally two days ago. So I was over at <laughs> my friend's house. And I stayed late because we were playing Super Smash. Okay. So I was like, I was ended up being like super late. It was like two... 2 30 and, and i was like bitch, i gotta up. go home no i'm just kidding no <laughs> i was like it's too i was like okay it's late like i gotta go like it's too much mm -hmm. luckily because i don't live so far now like it's i can nice. stay later things because i don't feel like as like you don't have a long ass drive i don't have a long ass drive anymore like i used to when i lived in santa Clarita. so i left tell me why at 2 30 like it was like three in the morning at this point i get on the freeway <gasps> what and there must have been an accident <gasps> or something had happened no. laura the traffic. The traffic was, it was mm -hmm. traffic that no one was moving because oh, it was like there was like you're parked. An act, I'm parked. They got it shut down. And it literally, I'm not kidding. I think it was like, I was stand still in traffic at three in the morning for like forty minutes. Oh, what? people were getting out of their cars. No man. Like this guy, the guy literally in front of me got out of his car because his car was overheating. It was like throwing smoke out and he had to like oh, get water and like guy. pour it on his car it's because whenever you're, if you have like your shit's fucked up or it leaks water like my car used Staying to do that too that if it stays still even like a drive through or anything like if it sits still while it's running you're not going it'll overheat and it was oh no so it was literally like i was like this is fucking I, imagine like at 3 30 in the morning 3 40 in the morning Jesus you're like i'm exhausted Christ. i want to get home so like, I don't know what it was, like what was happening on the freeway. And like, I always try to be like empathetic with like, what if someone is like, got into an accident. And I'm like, get me life. off this fucking freeway. But I'm also like, get me out of here immediately. Immediately. So I was there for like 40, I've never been oh, in standstill no traffic way. like that for 40 minutes. Dang. No movement. Where, and I, so the thing is with me, like, I start to get a little claustrophobic if I'm in my car for too long. Yeah. If I'm not moving. So yeah. like the idea that I'm you like, feel like you're going to be kept there forever. Yeah. So I'm like. The cars to my right, cars to my left. Like I couldn't like move if I, even if I wanted to. That's horrible. So I started to get a little panicky. So I tried to like, okay, I went on TikTok. I was like scrolling to like try to get my mind off of it because I was getting a little like crazy. Okay, Still like crazy. I'm stuck here right now. I'm gonna try not to freak out. I don't know. Does anyone else feel like that? Like if I'm in one spot for too long, I start to get a little like, wait, oh, I can't, I can't move. I god even when we remember that time we were like skiing i couldn't even get my oh, helmet yeah. off and i was getting i was having panic freaking attack out, i was yeah. freaking out because i was getting claustrophobic that's yeah. why because i couldn't like control it like i couldn't like move it yeah you're like trapped yeah i was trapped dang that's so horrible that was my pit because i was like at 3 30 the, the, the freeways morning. got me like that a time or two at three in the morning. A time or two. I'm um, coming home late and I thought I was going to jet home. And then they no, have doesn't make you like something. Crazy. No, it makes you beyond crazy, especially whenever you thought. I thought. Because in LA, traffic's always bad. But whenever it's that hour, it's not. Oh, no. It's like. So you think you're going to just. Sailing. Jet, oh, aren't you so pissed that you didn't I take the side too. streets? <sighs> Oh my god! And I was just, I was just very unwell. I was very unwell, having to be trapped in my car for forty fucking minutes. Oh my! Because god. of like either it was like road work happening or a cra I don't know what it was. It was just bad, horrible. Wow. How about you? What's your pit? Well, my pit is Ty's dad. So his dad, Tyler's dad, my father-in-law. Um, he he's getting tests done to see if there's like cloggage in the heart. And honestly, what makes me more sad than anything is Ty is so upset, as he should be, like Absolutely. rightfully so. But Ty, I've never seen him this upset. So well, it's scary. It's like you just—it's so it's the scary. unknown. So scary. The unknown is so like and the heart, spooky. 
the heart's like the heart it's the heart the heart is the heart the heart is the heart so it's like that's a big uh, a big way out. but i am hopeful that the tests come back good because they're just doing testing like they're like mm-hmm. blood work is not you know it's showing things so that we want to check now so the so okay guys so it's so it's blood levels work showing are high something. on the blood work got it levels are high on you the know blood like work. this is like the 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 freaky thing to me is like as we get older obviously our parents get older too and like yeah. with that comes yep like ailments yep. like different things that happen right and it's a very strange thing because it's like okay i'm getting older that means you're getting like it's you almost forget that your parents yeah. are getting older because you're getting older and then it just happens and it just happened you're like wait why yeah like why would that be happening to you but like shouldn't you be in the i was just thinking time? the other day it's weird like gen z was always so young to me oh but yeah. gen z is already in college. Like Gen Z is mm-hmm. no longer little kids anymore. Yep. Like Gen Z was little kids and it, they grew up so fast. So like they're now not even like little kids anymore. You know what, what is, I mean? Um, under that. Uh, it is, What's it is that? it called um, X something Tyler? What's the next generation? XYZ? Generation something. Generation uh, X. Tyler will have to look it up. And XYZ. Yeah. F T. T-Y-S-M. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much. LOL. Laugh out loud. Yeah. It's Generation LOL. Gen, Gen Alpha. Alpha. I feel like we need a new name for that. I don't like it. I don't like Gen Alpha. It literally sounds like. It sounds like the end of the world to me. Sounds like very like I'm generous. Like I'll Gen pay you to Alpha. sleep with me. Gen, Gen, Alpha. Gen Alpha. Like what? Gen Z? I'm, I'm all Alpha. about it. No. We're not doing it. Okay. We're not doing that. <laughs> I'm an alpha lore. I'm sorry that I'm not a beta. Oh my God. Get me out of here. <laughs> so we got quite a few topics today. First, we're going to start off with Mascara Gate, which is the name they have honored this drama with. Every drama that gets big enough gets its own title. So this one's its become Mascara Gate. To give you guys a rundown really briefly of what happened, then we'll go into the details of how mm. it took a turn. Michaela, who has 14 million followers, she's... I mean, pretty relevant. I'm sure you like, guys know you who guys we're talking know about. She is. Especially on TikTok. On TikTok beauty. specifically. She's like blown up in the past two years. I'd say like extra big in beauty. And um, a lot of people, she, as in a lot of people, millions of people actually go to her for an honest review. Mm-hmm. That is what her page is. She's is a reviewer. trying makeup and giving an honest review. Like that's what the page is. But I will say it's like one of the heaviest viewed right now in our time pages on that. So she got a sponsorship with L'Oreal paid partnership to review their new telescopic mascara that came out, which was already kind of going viral. I the had, telescopic lift. The te- telescopic mm-hmm. lift. I had already tried it on my YouTube channel because of kind of how much attention it was already there getting. Was several, uh, before that, were, there was several other sponsored posts about it. There was mm-hmm. a lot of other creators that were sponsored to talk about. I had just seen it everywhere, mm-hmm. like everywhere. So I was like, great. So anyways, she did the review of it. And allegedly at the end of the re- review, she's like telling you, you can't, I can't believe it looks good. It looks like I have on a false lash. And she, in fact, allegedly has on a false lash, trying to skew her audience to believe that she doesn't that the mascara did her lashes and made them look that good. Mm -hmm. That is what happened. So if you look at the video, my personal opinion, I think she has a false lash on. Um, And that is my personal opinion. Michaela has not spoken out yet to say what happened there. What has or happened there? I will say this much. I have done tons of spawn in the past 10 years that I've been online. I have done just tons of sponsorship with a variety of brand from Maybelline to L'Oreal to Estee Lauder to Philadelphia Cheesecake, like Manny as well. We both have, and I'm talking big conglomerate brands. And I can say this, the bigger the brand, the harder the partnership is because of the amount of legal and red tape that they have to go through and you have to go through. Mm -hmm. There is no world where a brand has ever, even small or big, asked me to do something dishonest or asked me to add a lash or Mm -hmm. asked me if anything those are the specific brands that literally will be like take your stuff down like absolutely not because it falls back on their shoulders legally and when you're such a big conglomerate you cannot have that Mm -hmm. so i right now in this situation based on my experience working with big brands like that i do not believe that l'oreal asked her to put a lash on 
because there's a little bit of there's not a lot of speculation on that honestly i think majority of people don't think l'oreal asked her to put a lash on i don't think a lot of people did think that though they, I saw a yeah lot right of you saw some that. of that i mm-hmm. saw some of that too that's why i was like i just want to tell my experience on that yeah from what we've experienced in the Past, like me and Manny have actually done mascara campaigns with NYX before. No false lashes Dude. we use. And our lashes sucked. Okay. <laughs> our lashes fucking sucked. They, we were literally like. I was like, baby, I'm curling it. We're, I'm curling it. We are it. doing five layers here. And NYX, I still have pictures of the flyer. This this campaign that me and Manny did went up in New York City. Like mm-hmm. billboards, like uh-huh. posters in the NYX store. Yep. Like our faces were everywhere. And you just see our three crusty lashes. And they went with the truthful ad. Mm-hmm. Like NYX, And they were like, you cannot add a lash. You cannot add any kind not of that like we false. Asked. We did no, not we ask. ask. But they were very specific in the brief before. They were like, you cannot have anything that's like not this mascara on. And guess who owns NYX? L'Oreal. Mic drop. <laughs> and Laura just mic dropped right now. I'm just saying, like, I'm just trying to say, like, my point from my perspective, what, where I work with brands, mm-hmm. they've never asked me to do anything like that ever. Mm-hmm. If anything, those are the brands that would probably freak out more about yeah, it. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, you know, I feel like obviously so similar to you in the situation. Um, I... It's such a weird predicament to be in because I have a relationship with Michaela, you know, and I have a friendship with her and I truly care about her as a human being. Yes. Um, and from this situation, all I'm hoping to see is her move forward and grow and learn from this. And because in my opinion, too, I did feel like she was wearing clusters. I didn't know if it was a, a, a band necessarily. I thought I'm like, oh, it looks like she's wearing individuals like stacked across because that one video she had before. And that's what it was. And I was like. I hope that this is one of those things where it's like a big learning lesson where it's like you have to really truly be the most authentic to your audience possible and make sure that you are just having their best interest at heart because at the end of the day, that's all you really have is your word. At the end of the day, like all you can ever take with you to the grave is your word, right? And so you can't sell out your word just for a quick buck. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it's something that you, I feel like, obviously we've been doing this for almost 10 years now. It's just something you learn along the way. And I remember when I was really young, um, really barely starting out, Sessa Samantha. Okay. Back in the day, she was showing me how to monetize my Google, my channel. Okay. Um, And I was like, you know, she was like walking me through it. And she was, and I was like, well, how do you do like sponsorships? Like, what do you do? She was just like, very helpful with me in the beginning stages of my career with that. And she was like, just remember that if you are doing a sponsorship, love it, use the product, make sure that you something that you really care about because imagine this 15 year old girl who just got a job or boy just got a job and they just spent their hard, you know, literally worked so hard getting this money to buy the product that you recommended. Like mm-hmm. how guilty would you feel if you didn't like the product and they bought it And they just worked a nine to five, like a hard ass job to earn money to buy what you said. And that always stuck with me. That's real perspective. That's real perspective. That's real ass shit. That's real ass shit. That's real shit. Waking the fuck up Mm -hmm. and seeing like what this is Mm -hmm. and like having a really good perspective on it. And I've never forgotten it since you told me that literally seven years ago. And it's always like, and even then I'll still talk about it. I'm like, you know, I think that that's something that stuck with me because I've worked hard jobs. You have. Absolutely. We put those times in. We haven't just been beauty gurus our whole fucking life. We didn't. Yeah. We didn't start as beauty gurus like at 18 and never have a job. We were well into our 20s and we had worked multiple many had graduated college already Uh i tried to graduate college and Mm -hmm. i couldn't (laughs) but we we had done we had accolades okay we already had accolades in the real world Mm -hmm. i had been working i had a job for four years working 40 five hours mm-hmm. a week in the medical field before mm-hmm. I even touched this. So mm-hmm. we had a real good taste of we reality. Knew. Like we got it. Like we understood like what that work week looked like. I was in school full time as well as being a waiter and host. Like I would had flashcards under my desk took to make that money. I knew and I felt I'm money. like, I fucking had to work for this shit. So when she had told me that I really, it just hit hard for me when Samantha yeah. told me that back in the day. So this is one of those things where it's like, Is she wearing lashes? Is she not wearing lashes? I personally think that there's definitely clusters added to it. So do I think that she deserves to be wrecked and like like ran off the internet? No, I don't. I think that she can take this and learn from it because it was something that I do not obviously condone. We both don't. And I am disappointed that it happened in the first place because the thing that really 
sucks in this situation is when the comment section of videos like this are like, I knew I couldn't trust beauty gurus. Yeah. That's the part that hits hard for the whole community. This it's not just part one thing. I want to talk about a little bit. So when this shit hits the fan and this is blowing up, you start to see all the OGs speaking out on it. And mm -hmm. I mean handfuls OGs that we haven't heard anything loudly from in a long time. And so the question is, yes. oh, why are all the OGs waking up? Well, let me just tell you while we're waking up on mm -hmm. this one. Because we didn't blow up overnight. Mm -hmm. We didn't gain millions of followers in a week. We crawled. We crawled. So a lot of these bitches so can these run. Bitches can run <laughs> yeah. And now we're getting all the all influencers are dishonest and the OGs are going, no, 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 no. We're gonna put a pause on it right mm -hmm. there. We spent I mean, like, I was on YouTube for two and a half years, and this isn't short form content. I'm gonna say it right now. YouTube is 10 times harder than Absolutely. any real, any short, any mm -hmm. TikTok that could be put out there mm -hmm. youtube is such a it's harder a platform game. is a different game like mm -hmm. it doesn't even compare the work yeah. that you put into so for us and hundreds of others that put years in on youtube to build these audiences that were so hard to build because mm -hmm. influencers didn't exist like mm -hmm. we were building a beauty community that didn't exist for people to come in and then make it, not that it can make it look much worse, but right, right, but right. specifically with beauty and doing a um, review that is allegedly dishonest. Um, dishonest. Mm -hmm. You know, the OGs are going to speak up and say what they really feel about mm -hmm. it. Because some of these people have been in the industry for five minutes and it's like, really? Like, mm -hmm. really? You know what well, I mean? That, that's the hard part is that it becomes like everyone gets compared. It's like, it's one overarching community, but it's really not that. And I feel like the community hasn't really been like a huge community for years, yeah. you know? And like, yeah. now there's a really great community on TikTok, which is so cool. And I love that there's a big beauty community on there. There is. But um, when it starts becoming like, I knew I couldn't trust all beauty gurus, that's when you see people start to, start to speak up. Especially the OGs. Especially the OGs that are like, yo, I've been like, like reviewing products, me? honestly. For 10 years. For 10 years. And like, it's like, you can't group everyone into one bucket just because one person allegedly did a falsified review yes you cannot throw everyone in the bucket and say we're all liars exactly and we all you know fake everything because a lot That's of us true. built what we have from our honesty and if we didn't do what we did they wouldn't be where they're at mm -hmm. so it, then you know that's why there's a lot of offense taken for the ogs and i right. think that's why a lot of ogs our have opinions. had that's what we think this is what we think, think. This well, we're is seeing just... some because even me and laura i'm like why is everyone like and I'm like, well, this, this is my thoughts on it. Like, mm -hmm. I feel like the OGs are like, offended. oh, we're going to we're going to let it, let them know. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? So like it causes a bigger uproar. And mm -hmm. this is my thing for Michaela. Everybody makes mistakes. 100%. Everybody makes bad decisions. I personally 100%. think that she made a very poor decision in the moment. She's what, 24, 23. So she 24, I think. 24. And so she started getting popular a few years back. So she was like in her very early 20s, 20, 21. So I think it's one of those things where you like learn these lessons a little bit later on in life or you go through something really traumatic. Yeah. Whereas like, for example, yeah. like this is like a very like traumatizing that thing that could be for her. Yeah. We've been through trauma. Totally. We've been in totally. horrible situations that we had to literally look and find what is the silver totally. lining in this? Why are we in this? What's going to make us grow? For, totally. Like, how are we going to grow from this in some way as human beings? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And we found that and we have it when we evolved and we moved on. It's gotten to the point where it's like, okay. I think so we too. We fucking get it. She understands. There's no more need to like completely dogpile continuously. Like she made her mistake. She's, I'm sure, going to own it and move forward. Yep. I hope she owns it. I mean, granted, she hasn't come back yet. This episode, we're filming on a Tuesday. She's it's going to air on a Friday. So if something happens in between there, we're sorry. But mm. but I hope she owns it. And it's like, listen, yeah. Like, listen, I started this conversation with me and Manny admitting we're not perfect ourselves. So don't think that we're sitting over here thinking that, you know, we've never done anything no, wrong. No, no. We have. But Absolutely. The, there, there, are, there is consequences to your action. And whenever you have an audience at that size, yes, your responsibility is that size. So when mm -hmm. you make a big mistake, it is going to show be in that issue. grandeur. Like it's going to be that size. So mm -hmm. like it all does fall in line with what actually makes sense and what's happening. Because, you know, there's a lot of people that's like, it's it's just mascara and i'm like it's deceptive advertising but we've said our piece mm -hmm. the internet has berated her for a week now a almost week. and yeah. it's like she's one human being 
she made a mistake and I'm hoping if she can come back, she can own that mistake. Yes, she's going to lose people that loved her. No, some of them are not going to come back. Is there going to be a ton of people still watching? Absolutely. Absolutely. And they're going to be waiting on her next review and see what she has to say. Hopefully she takes ownership and then moves on. Is she going to be berated about it for the next few months? Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. She is. Maybe the next few years, to be honest. <laughs> honestly, with, from what honestly, we've known and experienced. From my personal experience. Few years. <laughs> last week, someone was like, <laughs> <laughs> shit talking Liter me. literally so it's just like you'll probably honestly deal with this one for life as I long mean, as you're online 100 percent. and you know people saying that it's just mascara it's just lashes it's just this like i understand what they're saying but I like too. at the end of the day like it's it only applies if you care in that way for example right. someone that's like not in the beauty community saying like girl it's just lashes fuck off someone that's a an avid watcher of the beauty community and watches people review to buy something, they're going to be like shook by yeah. something like this. So it really is more perspective. It's easy to say it's just mascara whenever you're not spending your hard earned money on the makeup on the of the makeup. people reviewing. Exactly. It's easy to say it's just mascara whenever you have money or that wasn't your last 15 bucks. Exactly. You know what I mean? Like it's That's easy what to it go. Is. It's just mascara. But I get what they're saying at I the same too. point because they're like, people are so people are angry. Dying. People are dying like, of starvation. Yes, 100%. Like, where's the outcry it's for that? Perspective. There's, it it's is. all about perspective perspective when I the situation it. but it is really more so about it's not about the fact that there's falsely added it's about the deception mm -hmm. it's the underlying tone of saying that there is no lash added and that it was anyway we hope the best for her absolutely moving forward. Moving forward i hope that this never happens again with her mm -hmm. um I don't think it will probably. I don't think so. I if I had truly to guess, don't. I can't I predict the future, don't. but I don't uh -huh. think it'll happen again. Not, sure. And like, I hope that she can just come back, own it. She's going to have to fight through the bullshit it's to find her place back. But guess what? Who else had to do that? Me and you. I mean, a lot of people who have been through anyone who something has, like this. Anyone who has mm -hmm. been through something knows that you got to like when you come back, it's going to be really hard and you just got to push through because there's going to be a lot of noise and a lot of people that don't want you back. Mm -hmm. But it's like just focus on your audience is still there for you and do the best job that you can at being an honest, open influencer that exactly. they perceived you to be. And honestly, like there have been so many. I know like it's, it's like tomatoes and oranges, but there have been so many worse creators in so many other spaces in the internet, like whether it's like in gaming, like across, the, across internet. the internet in general, like literally influencers who have done so much worse mm -hmm. than this mm -hmm. that yep. have come yep. back yep. and had insane careers afterwards. Absolutely. So Absolutely. this isn't something that like is as dire as things have happened that other creators have done. Like this is like, and compare, if you wanted to really compare, baby, this is like a small thing. Yeah. Compared to some of the large things that other people have fucking tried. Absolutely. Yeah. I don't want Michaela to go away. Me neither. I don't want her to go away. I don't want her to feel pushed off the internet. Same. I think she made a mistake. I think she got to take accountability. And I think like my own personal experience is going to take. It's going to be TikTok hard. TikTok moves faster than your t YouTube. Totally. So she's lucky in that corner. But it's going to take months for people to kind of glide on past mm -hmm, this one. Mm -hmm. Whereas ours took years. She'll always have the check mark on yeah. it. We always call this like we always. Strike, the, strike, the, stri the strikes the checks you'll always have like that now that's attached to your name and so once the check marks become too much you start to dwindle you start yeah. to like kind of yep. people lose trust in you completely yeah. and they're like oh you've had too many things that are checked against you now mm -hmm. this will be a check for her mm -hmm. but this is something again you can use it to you're like, you know what? I fucked up and you can move forward. Exactly. And never do something like this again. And Absolutely. people will see that and be like, you know what? She's learned something and she's moving forward. Absolutely. And that's what I want for her is to move forward and, in the and best that way. way. We wish, girl. We wish. Don't let it destroy you. Exactly. But be on your shit. As long as you own your, and you own your shit. As long as own you your own shit, your shit. And then move forward. Yeah. And amen. And amen to that. Holy Spirit. Activate. activate. Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit activate. Activate. <laughs> activate. <laughs> okay, our next topic is Mr. Beast. So Mr. Beast is under like fire on Twitter. <laughs> Which like, this is a little wild. Honestly, and I'm honestly so disappointed by the fact that people are saying things. Like Me so too. He did a video uh, like yesterday, two days ago where he cures a thousand people of blindness. Like these are people that like were able to be cured from it. Like it was almost like- Were they curable. paying for eye surgery? Yes. It was paying for he eye pay surgery? He paid for all their eye surgeries. A hundred people's? A thousand. What? A thousand. I thought it was a hundred. 
Well, it was a thousand. He like got people from like around the world and oh. paid for their curable thing that like it's like I don't think it's covered by insurance though. Like this is like a specific thing where you can like get surgery. It wasn't LASIK. No, it's oh. like, I think it was like I think it was literally like they were like actually blind, <gasps> like certified like, like by the government's like you're blind like legally blind legally blind um so he paid for a thousand people to do it and the video did really really great thousand. it took off for him a thousand people um and all these people and it like shows like them seeing and it's like this very honestly heartfelt touching video so the the issue is that the internet decided to take it upon themselves to say that he was pandering and that he's only doing good deeds because he's filming it why does that matter why why does that matter did he really cure a thousand people and give them surgery? Yes. yes. So why does it matter why? Do you think those people it happened, care why? Dude. Do you think those people, the people care that can see why the sky? they can see again? No. If you were blind and some random white dude in North Carolina wants to pay to give you vision and you're like, you know what? I'm to not doing it, this because you, you're going to put out, you want to record it. In what fucking world? <sighs> As you hit your fucking head. In what world? I'm actually going to read the, off the tweet that yes. he he literally tweeted about it. And I was like, mm-hmm. Pop mm -hmm. off. Pop and I'm so glad he did because it was like. It so he goes, Twitter, dash. Rich people should help others with their money. Me. Okay. I use my money to help people. And I promise to give away all my money before I die. Every single penny. Twitter. Mr. Beast is bad. Yep. And it's the truth because people are basically saying that he's only doing this because it's supposed to be feel good content for the internet and he's doing it to to make money off that and then give the money continuously back to, people. Back to people to really who really need money to and help. really need help like genuinely and people need are help mad. and people are mad find something else to be mad about find, find there something are other else. things there are other much things worse things to be, mad at. to be mad at listen i did a video a few years back on food on foot where We've been a part of Food on Foot, me and Tyler, for a very long time. Mm -hmm. It is an organization, organization in L.A. that help homeless people get back on their feet. And it completely rehabilitates them with homes, jobs, everything. So we've been part of that, right? So I did a YouTube video interviewing someone who went through all the courses of Food on Foot and completely flipped his life upside down. Mm -hmm. And my point in doing it wasn't so much to be like, look at me, look what I did. Do you know how much food on foot grew and got so many sponsors and donors from me doing that mm -hmm. from Help me them. exposing, giving them that exposure. Mm -hmm. Hello. And also like, what's so wrong with letting people know that you helped someone? Like what it, like, like my so God, bad about that, what dude? is so like, horrible? Honestly, and like, the thing is, if you were to say something like, let's say for something like, you know what? Like I saw someone, on the street, helped him out, gave him something. And you're telling someone that, that could inspire them to be like, you know what, let me help. So, like passing it forward. David you know, Dobrik's like been giving... doing this for years as well. Since when are people like, you know, where he buys all of people's stuff. Right. Then... But no, this Mr. B takes it to a completely different level. He does. It's more like, he does. I feel like it's more selfless in a way because yeah. he's doing it to complete strangers. Yeah. Mind you, obviously giving away things because you're rich, that's incredible. Like. If you can help other people with the resources that you have, do it. People would rather a rich, so people would rather see a rich people keep all their riches than to actually really help someone their money because we knew about it. Yeah. So, okay, cool. Oh, it's pan They're only doing it because uh, they want us to see that so they're helping. So the people who they did help, fuck them, right? Fuck them. It's, well, it's honestly, I was like. This is a damned if you do, damned if you don't. Truly. This is a damned but if honestly, you do, Honestly, I hope that like this doesn't affect Mr. Beast at all. I, I hope that it's just something so. that like he's just like, you know what? And it's like, I just hope it again. doesn't Move like forward. make him not want to do That's what this. I'm saying. That's I'm what like, makes me concerned. Don't let that be mm -hmm. the thing that makes you stop yourself from doing this. Like, right. No, like continue to do this work. Continue to show it off. Maybe you inspire. And, and one day that video had 50 million views. Maybe you inspire some people on that video to go and help someone I'm else sure. too. sure. Like, I'm sure. Do it. Like, who cares if it's like Does he not money? deserve the AdSense? When have any of you, any of me and Manny, put together a thousand people to give them vision? Does How? he not deserve the AdSense? And by the way, Mr. Beats doesn't actually spend his AdSense. He spends it on either new content creation or he gives it away. 
Like, listen to him on a podcast. If half these people complaining actually listen to podcasts he's done, and I've listened to many because I find him very interesting on mm-hmm. how he's, like, cracked the code on the YouTube algorithm and what he's done with it. Uh-huh. So I've listened to him, and, like, he started out making all this money and doing the typical YouTube thing, buying the big house, the fancy designer clothes, and all the cars. He got robbed. Someone took all his shit, Mm -hmm. and he realized then, he woke up. He was like, what am I doing? I don't even want this shit that people are trying to steal from me. So he turned it around and started giving all this shit away to everyone. (laughs) And they want to hang on And he lives like in a normal house and like has millions. Yeah. And they want to hate on that. That's they want to hate on that. I'm like, that's of all who things, they want to hate on. That's who they want to hate on. Of all things and of all people, that's who you guys want to like dogpile on. Yeah. Pick somebody else. I'm out of 10. Pick I'm out somebody of 10 else. with that one. Pick somebody else. Like, I'm not going to have anyone come for our Mr. Beast like that. Not our Mr. Beast. Uh uh-uh, uh. He's and Mr. Beast, ours. If you ever want to come on full cover, let us know. <laughs> <laughs> no, but seriously, he's. I just feel like he's a very selfless person. And I don't think he deserves. He's it. a really great example Truly. of what people can do with their money. It's the inspiring. End. It's inspiring, and I hope that he continues to do it. Certainly. Okay. Next, we have a very interesting topic, which this is another TikTok. TikTok. Well, well, I guess the beauty community really used to hold the controversy on the internet, but now for a long for time. For a long time. For a long but the baton time. has been passed over to the TikTokers. Um. So, Scar Girl. Scar Girl. This is like, I feel like this is really taking the internet by storm. It has. Scar Girl has become like, it's like blown a phenomenon. Up. And it's, it's like, so is the dress gold or is it blue? Oh, it's another one of those. It's one of those. It's like everyone knows the answer to this, but she won't admit it. So no one can get sleep at night. Like people are losing their mind over this. So let's give a little bit of backstory. So there's this creator um, who has a scar on her face across here and. She basically says, like, this is my scar. It's not something I alter. This is what it looks like. I have had the scar on my face for a long time. So people are now, like, digging up how there's photos, like, when the scar looks completely different, going in a different direction. Like, they're like, baby, you add that on. It looks so fake. It doesn't look like a scar. It looks like a dark brown streak across your face. I have personally never seen a scar like this. Never in my life. Never in my whole life. Um, so people are kind of like this, like you're, it's almost like you're using this scar Mm -hmm. or like people are saying that it's a fake scar to like get clout, like be like, Oh look, I'm so different. I'm so niche. And she has gotten a literal ton of clout from it. Mm -hmm. Um, and so the internet's constantly going, girl, the scar's not real. And the internet also has, um, we watched some TikTok videos on people showing what the scar originally looked like, because I do believe this girl did have a cut across her cheek. For sure. And she did have a I think she actually did have a scar, a scar to yeah. begin with. And then what happened is, I believe, we're speculating here. The whole internet speculating, but, the whole thing. you know, the scar healed up. And so it was kind of like the clout was gone off She's the like, big oh, wait, scar on the cheek. I liked having it there. So then now the scar's back. And so what happened is people put together all the different times she had the scar. And if you put the videos back to back, the scar... Scar changes it's completely. It's jumping the around. Jumping. It's bending. Different it's flipping. color. And different. she will not... Every time she does a video on like removing the scar, trying to trying to, trying to disprove that the scar is fake because people think it's makeup. Mm-hmm. If you look at it, it's like a brown streak. It looks, it looks like, like an like eyebrow dark stamp. Contour. It looks like dark contour Boom. pencil and uh-huh. the eyebrow stamp. It's like in the shape of an eyebrow stamp. Yeah, so that's why some people, talk. you know, it's it's strange. So any video of her proving it's real by wiping on it with tissue or a cotton swab, she either like misses the scar or you or can just tell. Like, like a, a very you can just surface tell level, it's like, such is such a soft rub like you can tell it's like she's missing it and it's like why won't you put your camera up to the scar with a flash and let on us see to the end, texture the let's end all of this she let's doesn't end want to though. all it's, it's of the this cloud. yeah she i think that she enjoys the discourse almost because mm-hmm. that's what gets her name talked about like mm-hmm. i don't think that she's gonna do an up close of the scar because i don't think she really cares what people think about the scar you know what you're right i think that's i just like that literally just came to me right now she I think that she wants the knows, attention. She knows that they just want That's her to want. say it. And she knows if she says it, It'll it's stop. done. The story's done. Because there's it's like a done. scar girl filter now. Yep. And like on TikTok, you can put the scar filter on and it changes your scar because her scar changes. So Shady the filter, I know. Can pe- do people make the filters on TikTok? Yeah, they can. Humans? They individuals? Can, yes, yes, individuals can do that. 
Shady Horror. Oh, well, I'll be damned. Mm-hmm. So there, so if you just type in Scar Girl, like that's all you have to type in. You'll see. You will see the plethora. It is way more stitches and like drama videos made about it than even her content. Because at first, like I had never seen her in my entire life. Same. None of her actual content from her feed had ever popped up on my mm-hmm. page. But all of a sudden one day, tons of like stitches and drama videos about it. And I'm like, who is this person? And why am I seeing all these stitches on this person when I haven't even seen the person as it is, stitching. you know, like I've yeah. seen Michaela, I followed yes, Michaela, yes, I liked yes. a ton of her content. Different. So when other videos about the mascara thing popped up, I, it made sense. But the Scar Girl thing, I'm like, TikTok is like making this viral, I swear. 100%, I, like on purpose. I've never engaged with it. I've never seen it before. And then it's like my whole timeline and it's everywhere. And though. Girl. She went on the Best Friends podcast? Yes, BFF. BFF podcast. And she talked about it and like Dave was like... Why is you wearing your hair down? Oh, uh, because she kind of like it was like interesting because uh-huh. majority of the time, like her scar is out whenever she's doing her TikToks. But whenever she went on the podcast, you know, it was very this. And it, he literally was straight up like called her out. Like, he's like, what are you doing? Yeah. Like, You're why today? Like, are we covering also, the like, scar? I will say, so she has like her, her def- this is a defense that she has for it, by the way. Okay. So her defense is she had a scar and like the scar, a scar did happen. And one of the treatments that she was doing mm. and she applied the treatment over the scar <gasps> caused a chemical reaction on her face oh. to make the scar almost a new scar or shift in some capacity because she had put the cream like all over the whole area. I feel like if she would just like snap a pic with a flash, a close up pic we with know. a flash, we can then agree or disagree with you. 100%. It's so that it's, simple. It's harder to believe the story when there's when literally nothing backing it. When they refuse to like show it. an yeah. actual close up whenever that would end all of speculation this. it would end all of this if there was mm-hmm. just like a close-up with the flash of it like if it, this was is that big of a deal and it kind of has become online yeah why not put it to bed right. if it's real right. if it's real why not just show the scar close up 4k let's she go doesn't, she doesn't care if it's that if they if people think it's real now she just wants people to talk about her in my personal opinion allegedly well i mean that um, makes sense because it makes sense like she's caught from it <laughs> yeah like, like people are talking about it constantly so people are gonna be like who's scar girl they're gonna look her up maybe people like her content they'll follow her yeah boom and like that in itself is creating this discourse for her right so she's gonna like that's her story that's what she says that she says it's a it's a new scar from a chemical reaction like burn that she got from treating the first scar and that's why it looks like it's shifted in some capacity. Understood. Even though I do not understand how one way it's going up and one that way it's going That was what down. got me because like a boomerang is, like this. Boom. And then it was like boom. that. Like it flipped I, multiple times. So I'm like, I'm even if you had about. a chemical reaction, it shouldn't have like flipped the complete and total shape and the way it was the sitting it, on your face. Yeah. Or like the, the direction in which the scar was moving. The direction of the scar moving. That was confusing to me. So you guys on that one, just just let us know what you think about what Scar Girl. Think? If look, you know what we're Girl. talking you'll about. Know talking, or you'll, you'll, you'll see. Yep. Okay. Very our confusing. last topic. Oh, oh, this is interesting. Julia, Julia Fox, Uncut Jams. Uncut Jams. Uncut Jams. Honestly, I follow Julia on TikTok. I fell in love with her. And I love. I fell in love with her, her TikTok. I didn't hate her when the, whenever she. Was, well, you didn't know her. I well, when she started dating Kanye, I was like clout chaser. Oh, me too. I, you know my first, I, mean? I was like oh, clout chaser. I'm, I'm like, girl, like, what are you doing? Uh huh. You know, I'm not gonna be lie. I'm like, you're literally just like. But now, as you see her personality more on TikTok, I'm like, I can see why Kanye would like her. I love her. Because how can you not? She's She's a hidden treasure. So She was a hidden treasure. She's a fucking hidden treasure. But the internet has kind of come to realize that. Yeah, 100%. Like, we see that now because of her being open on her platform. She's chosen to be a super, super open person about her life and put it all out there despite the controversy of her and despite the kickback that she's gotten. Like, she's put it all out there. So, basically online, all, by the way, all of the net worths of people, including my Mani, are completely off. Completely off. Some are higher, some are lower. Oh, my God. Like, they are so vastly far off. Mm -hmm. It's wild. So... Her says she's worth thirty million, and I'm like, how the hell is Julia? She must have a trust fund. But anyway, she comes out and she's like, "Girl, I'm not even close. To 30. I'm not even close to worth thirty million." Because mm-hmm. I'm like, guys, people, majority of actors, unless you're Brad Pitt or Margot Robbie, you get paid a couple hundred thousand per movie, per, role. per main role, and. And it's like, yeah, that's a lot of money, but it's not for the Hollywood lifestyle. It's not for living in New York and it's not for living in L.A. It's not for having a nice car. Like that mm-hmm. kind of money doesn't pay for that kind of stuff. Unless you're doing roles all like unless you're booking five movies back, a year. Like it needs to be like. Julia boom, boom, has boom, had boom, smaller boom. parts. Mm-hmm. 
And so she's like honest about that. She's yeah. like not worth anywhere near 30 million. As a matter of fact, she lives in New York and the apartments are typically smaller there. She's like, I'm going to give you an apartment tour and it's going to be real. It's going to be raw. And I'm going to show you guys what Julia Fox lives like. First of all, my house gets a mess too, but that, that place was a mess. Okay. A mess. So that's where the internet went in. So it is, a, mm-hmm. it's like a two bedroom apartment. It's yeah. so real though. It's like so lived in. There's no like designer furniture, designer yeah. clothes, closets with shoes and designer. Ba- right. There's none of it's that. It's not a housewife's there is, house. It's not a, there is none of that. Now looking at Julia Fox, her fashion, everything, I would have thought there was that. Same. I was 100%. actually really surprised herself. herself, the way yeah. she presents herself and the amount of press she gets. I just assumed she had way more than what she had. But I mm-hmm. thought it was such a cool perspective um, for her to show that. Well, because I thought it was so real. It was so real because she's like, mm-hmm. this is my bedroom and all of my, all the shit in here is my kids because he just likes to be in here. Mm-hmm. And then this is my kid's room and this is my hallway and this is all I have. This is it. This yeah. is all I have. And then it's just like her shit piled up everywhere. And I'm like, yeah, that's what living in a New York small apartment's like. Mm-hmm. Your shit is everywhere because you have nowhere to put anything. And it's all piled on top of each other. And it's just shit everywhere, honestly. And so the internet came down on her, which I'm like, guys, it was time to take your judging glasses off, Julia Fox, because she was trying to be real with y'all. And of course, you're all like, it's messy. You're a hoarder. This totally. is like junky. Your kids mm-hmm. shouldn't be living there. Like, what? No, this is how people actually really that's, live. Uh, hundred percent. It was a normal. Maybe a little messy, but like people live it's, messily it, all the time. It accords to what day of the week you catch my house. Oh, baby. You know what I it mean? It depends on the time. Like I give it, and it was just her trying to have a real moment, but I'm sure she's no stranger to conflict online. Absolutely. So she's probably like, whatever. She doesn't fucking care, but she also like me in a video that was like, you know, like I could have a bigger place, but like my son Valentino, like this is where he grew up. Like this is what he knows is what he loves. And I'm not going to move just because he just because I can. It's just like, I want him to be in the real world. Like I grew up in the real world. Like I'm not trying to give off this fantasy to him. Like he's going to be, you know, coddled. Yeah. And I thought there was something so powerful in saying that because I was like, this is so like true. Like the fact that she truly was like, you know what? I want to like have him live a normal ass life and be a real ass down ass bitch because that's how I grew up. That's what I want for him. It's too. something endearing, and it's that. very endearing. I, I truly, I think that is very something honest and endearing about it. You know what? I really like her, and the reason everyone's so shocked because it wasn't the same shit that we've seen every day That's why with mansions. They're expecting to see Kim with K's ri- house. They wanted to see That's Kim K's designer mm-hmm. house, and when they didn't see it, because they think every single celebrity who's ever been in a- anything lives like that. Right, and that's not and it not took the case. Kim how long to get there? You mm-hmm. know, like Kim in her forties just got there. So it's like this is real. This is what it's really mm-hmm. like. And I just I love the honesty because you never like why show that if you don't have to because of the scrutiny you're going to get for it, exactly. and like the fact that she did it anyways, and was just. Like, here's the truth. I don't care. This is who I am. Yeah. I, there's, that was empowering. It is. There's something very powerful. It's like, it's really is that, like, the whole, you know, when you're honest about something, yeah. you can see that and it resonates within people. It resonates so it's, with it's people with, a, with like a good heart and a good fucking head on their shoulders and a good, and a good brain, idiots. a good brain that isn't yeah. an idiot. Like who, I don't know. Like, it's like I, for the people, it's always interesting for me because the people who have ragged on me, um, I'm like, show me, show me your home Oh my or the people God. ragging on her. I'm like, let's see your home right now. Let's see it. Like, so when people, people are coming on my for makeup, you, they were ragging on, on like your artwork. Let's see your artwork before you before you throw the first stone. Oh my god, yeah, my artwork in my room. Yes. You were like, you know, people had something to say. Yeah. Well, let's see their artwork. Well, where's your art? Show what's in your house, your yeah, artwork. Honestly, I would love to see what you're doing. If you have so much to dog someone mm-hmm, on, you know, mm-hmm. like check yourself first. Because you I guarantee yourself. you those people dogging her in her apartment, like, come on. Like, come stop. on. How are y'all? It's also living? in a New York apartment. Like, what do yeah. you, like, how much do you expect out of a two bedroom in New York? Honestly, a two bedroom when, in New York, New York is, is so rich. expensive. Yeah, that in itself. The size of the apartment you know, she's was paying rich. like six grand a six, month. Six, seven grand. Yeah. It was like a two bedroom with like a separate kitchen. And you know, that's literally like seven that grand. That shit's expensive a month. in New York. So it's like, girl. Yeah. So it's like, I don't know. A lot of crazy stuff this week. Honestly, it's been like a, a fucking wild ride. <sighs> We, that we've been on. We really thought we were going to slip past Mascara Gate. We did. Mm-hmm. We really did. So I'm like, know. oh, like no one's going to be talking about it by then. The full fam was like, <laughs> we're waiting. And they're like, we're oh, waiting. we have to wait a whole week to hear it. And I'm like, oh, so they still want to hear it. <laughs> 
I know. Whenever, because like I oh. made a TikTok with like guys, because our last our last uh, video was on Alex Earl. <laughs> yes. It wasn't on Mascara Gate when it happened. I was like, guys, we pre film and y'all were like, we'll see you next week. <laughs> They're like, well, goddamn. But also, I will say, like, I don't think people know this too. Like, so when we when we film. The first episode we film of the day is our rapid fire episode that comes out the Friday. So we have three days between that's uploaded. The second episode is the episode that's usually not as like time sensitive or something that's not like happening virally going on right in this exact moment. It's something that's a little bit more like a one off, like a chill, like a they fun thing. They can go live at any time. And go live at any time. So that's why it's set up like that. And obviously we have really busy schedules, which is why we block shoot. So that's why we do it the way that we do right now. Yeah. Cause it's what's working for us. Yeah. You know, maybe things can change. The podcast grows, we grow everything, you know, podcast all that grows, stuff. we grow. And like, maybe it's things like, can we can work something out where like, we can hop on topics quicker for you mm -hmm. guys. But honestly, all in all, like, thank you for giving us this platform to speak to you yes. guys. And on. for all the, you know, the feedback on that stuff, like even hearing yeah. that stuff, it's like, okay, well, it's nice to know that you guys are like, I want an another episode when things are happening. And yeah. it's like, Oh, that's cool. Like that helps guide us mm -hmm. on like what you guys are looking for in this podcast. Mm -hmm. But like, seriously, thank you. Full fam. We love you guys. We the do. Full fam. F F F squared. <laughs> F squared. F squared. We and love you. And we will. That's it. That's it. That's today's, That's it for today's episode. So we'll see you guys in our next episode. We hope you have a best Friday, best weekend ever. Don't forget to rate, like, and subscribe. Mm -hmm. Leave a comment if you will. And we'll catch you in the next one. Bye, you guys. Bye.